everyone, I'm Adam Harrington. I'm spending some time outside today with one of my favorite wild edible plants, which is stinging nettle, Urtica dioica. And I harvested some here that you can see, and I'm actually drinking an infusion made from stinging nettle leaves. Now I harvested this plant without the use of gloves, and I didn't use scissors. You might be wondering, how did you do that? Doesn't this plant sting you? Well, it can, however, it's still pretty early in the season. It's still early spring, so this plant isn't fully matured. And more specifically, those stinging hairs, which are botanically known as trichomes, they're not fully matured. However, once the season progresses, once we get into late spring through summer, this plant can become quite formidable, and you might need to use gloves or at least scissors in order to harvest this plant. Now, if you're unfamiliar with stinging nettle, this is an edible wild plant that's nutritious and also has medicinal qualities. It's a perennial member of the Urticaceae family. It has oppositely arranged leaves that are toothed, and this plant typically inhabits disturbed areas, usually along floodplains and along forest edges. Now, there are two easy ways to effectively remove the sting from stinging nettle before you decide to consume it. And the first way is to cook this plant. All you need to do is cook it for a couple minutes. You could steam it, you could saute it or stir fry it, and after a couple minutes, that sting goes away and you could treat it like you would use cooked spinach. The second way is to dehydrate this plant. Pop it in a dehydrator for a little bit. You could put it out in the sun, you could hang it to dry, and once this plant is dry, the sting will not be there. And you can use this plant in infusions like I'm drinking right now. You could use it in tinctures. You can also add it to soups. Now, I love stinging nettle so much that I like to keep up to date on the research being conducted on this plant. And it seems that in the past two years alone, there have been several new studies documenting the healing potential found within this plant. For example, new research suggests that stinging nettle may help to treat breast cancer, that stinging nettle may help to enhance the wound healing process. And interestingly, a new study shows us the best way to make an infusion out of stinging nettle in order to extract the maximum amount of vitamin C which itself is associated with a whole host of health benefits. So needless to say, this is a fantastic plant and I know you're going to enjoy the brand new research that I'm going to feature in this video. And if you know someone who might benefit by watching this video, I encourage you to share this video with them so that more and more people know about the healing potential and experience the health benefits associated with this very common yet overlooked plant. Thanks for tuning in. Let's look at the brand new research on stinging nettle. First, let's look at the role that stinging nettle may play in treating breast cancer. So besides skin cancer, breast cancer is the most common form of cancer in American women and the second leading cause of cancer death in American women. With rates of breast cancer still extremely high, of course, more and more people are looking for answers both through conventional treatments and some not so conventional treatments. Now when it comes to stinging nettle, it's interesting that not a lot of people are talking about the role that this plant may play in treating breast cancer. There just doesn't seem to be a lot of information out there. However, when you look into the research, specifically in the past couple years, you see that there have been multiple studies documenting the healing potential that this plant may play in treating breast cancer. For example, in the journal Cellular and Molecular Biology, a study was published this year in 2018 showing that a leaf extract from stinging nettle induced something known as apoptosis, which is also known as programmed cellular death in breast cancer cells, specifically by influencing the expression of two specific genes associated with breast cancer. Another study published in the journal Biomedicine and Pharmacotherapy in 2017 found that a leaf extract from stinging nettle significantly inhibited the migration and considerably reduced the growth rate of breast cancer tumor cells compared to the negative and normal control groups. And in the researchers' own words, they stated in the study, our study clearly showed that the stinging nettle extract exerts the desired inhibitory effect on the growth and migration of the breast cancer cell line. And in yet another study published in the journal Clinical Breast Cancer in the year 2017, researchers found that a stinging nettle extract can decrease the growth of breast tumors and induce apoptosis in tumor cells. And the researchers concluded that stinging nettle may represent an ideal therapeutic tool for breast cancer. Now these aren't the only three studies suggesting that this plant may help to treat breast cancer. In the past five years, there have been three additional studies on this plant and its role in treating breast cancer. And not just breast cancer, but multiple studies have shown that stinging nettle may help to treat prostate cancer. Now of course the research is not conclusive, however it is hopeful and it is encouraging and hopefully in the not so distant future we'll see this plant being utilized more and more as a therapeutic tool in various cancer treatments. Next up, let's look at the ability of stinging nettle to enhance the wound healing process. Now, when many people think of herbal treatments for wounds, they don't necessarily think of stinging nettle. You hear a lot of people talking about plantain, comfrey, calendula, birch, self-heal, but a lot of people aren't including stinging nettle in their herbal first aid kits. And you might want to change your mind on that. 
because the results from a brand new study published in the journal Biomed Research International, published in 2017, suggest that stinging nettle enhances the wound healing process. So the researchers performed this experiment on rats and they divided the rats into four groups. One group received stinging nettle leaf extract and the other three were control groups. And here's what the researchers found. The group treated with the stinging nettle extract healed faster and showed less scarring, more blood capillaries, less inflammatory cells, more fibroblasts, and more collagen deposition compared to the control groups. And overall, the authors concluded that stinging nettle enhances the wound repair process by increasing the rate of various healing phases, including cell proliferation, angiogenesis, which is the development of new blood vessels, and collagen formation. And not surprisingly, there are no side effects reported. Now, in addition to enhancing the wound healing process, stinging nettle was also shown to have antibacterial properties, specifically against two bacterial strains, Staphylococcus aureus, which is a gram-positive bacteria, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is a gram-negative bacteria. And both of these bacterial strains can reside on the skin, though they can become pathogenic. Now, the researchers attributed the wound healing properties of stinging nettle to phenolic compounds, to fatty acids, and also to lupiol. Now, lupiol is a pharmacologically active triterpenoid with antimicrobial effects, anti-tumor effects, anti-inflammatory effects, and anti-carcinogenic effects. Now, I recently did a video on the wound healing properties of birch bark, and in that video, we talked about lupiol found in birch bark. Now, lupiol is also found in the birch polypore, also the chaga fungus, and of course, stinging nettle. Now, whenever we talk about wounds right here in this video, we're just talking about minor wounds. We're not talking about serious wounds. However, if you're somebody who likes to create herbal first aid products to help treat wounds, consider adding stinging nettle to your list of ingredients for the fascinating reason that it enhances the wound healing process. Next up, let's talk about stinging nettle and vitamin C. Now, it's been known for some time that stinging nettle is a good source of vitamin C. And it's really important that we ingest vitamin C through dietary sources like stinging nettle because we can't manufacture that compound and it's associated with a lot of health benefits. For example, vitamin C acts as an antioxidant it assists in the biosynthesis of collagen, of carnitine, of hormones. It's involved in the immune response. It helps us absorb iron. It also enhances the wound healing process. Now also, on the National Cancer Institute's website, they mentioned that high-dose vitamin C in patients with cancer has been shown in several studies to improve quality of life. And speaking of cancer, specifically breast cancer, higher levels of vitamin C intake before diagnosis has been shown to be positively correlated with breast cancer survival rate. Now here's the thing about vitamin C. It's a very unstable molecule and it starts to decompose once plant material is collected. It's sensitive to light, heat, oxygen levels, and so some amount of it decomposes from the time that this plant is harvested to when an infusion is made. Also, the actual content of vitamin C in infusions depends on various factors. For example, how much time you're allowing your tea to brew, what temperature you're brewing your tea at, which part of the plant you're using in your tea. Now fortunately, a recent study published in the Polish journal Annals of the National Institute of Hygiene, published in 2016, looked at this very topic. And they show us the best way to make an infusion or a tea out of stinging nettle in order to extract the maximum amount of vitamin C. And here's what they found. The amount of vitamin C present in infusions made of the leaves of stinging nettle, on average, is 1.6 times greater than in infusions from stalks, and 1.3 times greater than in infusions made from nettle's rhizomes. And for optimal vitamin C content in your stinging nettle infusion, a constant temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit, so 60 degrees Celsius, for 10 minutes is best. Any less than that, and we probably won't get as much vitamin C any more than that, and the vitamin C levels tend to go down. So just to reiterate, in order to extract the maximum amount of vitamin C from stinging nettle, it seems that 10 minutes at about 140 degrees Fahrenheit utilizing the aerial portions of stinging nettle seems to be the best. Now, how hot is 140 degrees? Well, it's definitely too hot to put your hand in, but it's not quite a simmering temperature either. Now, keep in mind, we're just talking about vitamin C here, and vitamin C is not the only health-promoting compound found within stinging nettle. And so if we brew it longer than 10 minutes at a different temperature, we might pull out other compounds like antioxidants or polyphenols or other vitamins or other minerals. However, if we're just looking for vitamin C, that's what the study looked at, if we're just looking for vitamin C, these are the parameters to use. Utilize the aerial portions of stinging nettle, use a temperature of about 140 degrees and do it for about 10 minutes. So there we have it. That's the latest research on stinging nettle and its ability to treat breast cancer, its ability to enhance the wound healing process, and also the best way to make an infusion from stinging nettle if we want to extract the maximum amount of vitamin C. 
Uh, keep in mind, these aren't the only studies on stinging nettle. It's also been shown to treat diabetes, benign prostatic hyperplasia, allergies, and more. And I'll link to a video in which I describe all of these features. Now, I really encourage you to get out there this year and forage for this fantastic plant and see if you can perhaps add it to either your dietary or medicinal strategy. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Head on over to learnyourland.com, sign up for the email newsletter, or we can stay in touch via social media at learnyourland. Thanks again. Happy foraging. Cheers.